Hello again, hello. It's nice to say hello. Here you are again at Max's Garage Mahal. Hello again, hello. Okay, so that's another example of a different way of doing the clock contest entry, although it doesn't really meet the uh, the format and doesn't meet the lyrics. That just gives you an idea you can take pretty much any song that happened to be Neil Diamond's Hello Again. I think that was his name. Anyway, you can take pretty much any song, title or, or not title, but tune, and put my lyrics to it and enter the contest. So y'all get on top of that. Get yourself a chance to win one of this Max's Garage Mahal clocks. How y'all like the way I've got one arm down on the chair over there one up? Well, maybe it's like a salute or something. I'm not sure. Anyway, what we're going to show you in this video is sort of a furthering of the cleanup. Had someone ask me to uh, show you what's underneath these things when you clean these up. Now, they're always cleaner than this when I blow them out. However, I washed all the stuff underneath the mower out and it got down on top of the deck, left a lot of dirty looking mud stuff behind. So it looks pretty rank. So we're going to go ahead and show you that. However, I will tell you this. Those clean out holes right there, guys, those are the berries. You do want to do that. May even find time in this video to show you how to do that. But first of all, we're going to show you what's under there. And you'll notice that I've already removed the bolts for the covers. They're laying right there. Let's see if we can get those in there for you. And we'll go over here to the bright side of the deck. We've got a light right there shooting down on the deck so that you can see a little bit better. And as I said, we've already removed the bolts, so this will get right on with it. So let's do that real quickly, and we'll show you what that looks like. And bear in mind, I do not have this on the, uh, on the tripod or a steady cam. don't have any of those fancy tools. I have a tripod. But... I'm just hand holding it right now and we're going to show you what that looks like under there this time and I've never done it this way before but I made a mess <laughs> I'll just be honest with you I made a mess and uh, I don't like these messes so that's pretty much how bad it looks with all the mud I left behind and uh, some clippings that I kept shooting that jet stream of water under there and it just made a mess so we're going to clean that up now we're not going to do it all on the video because it's just you know it's time consuming waste too much of your time so i'm going to clean it up that's what it looks like now i'm going to clean it up real quickly i'll come back when i'm done um really what i'm going to do is i'm first going to wash it off with damp paper towels a little soap on it with and the soap will have turtle wax hard shell uh pre-wax in it so We'll do two things at one time. We'll get that washed off and then we'll go back and we'll clean it real well and make sure we're underneath the pulleys and get that real nice and clean. We'll clean the pulleys up, put a little wax on them as well on the outside. Not in the V-grooves, guys. So we're not going to do that. We, and then we might be able to take one of these and do a layout, although it's a lot easier to show this when you're doing the real thing, drilling the holes and all, but I don't have any more of these on hand. And if we have anybody who lives near Searcy, Arkansas, that has to have a uh, Hustler Raptor or Raptor SD or Fast Track with the plastic covers like this, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll do that $29.95 drilling for you for free one time. You bring your more by here, we'll, uh, we'll take that set of covers off your more right here on camera. We will show everyone how to uh, lay those out and then we'll show you the spacing the way to do it and then drill them for you on camera and then we install them. So if someone near Searcy, Arkansas or Little Rock, Arkansas would like to have the $29.95 drilling, you are more than welcome to contact me at Max's Garage Mahal, that's M-A-X-S-G-A-R-A-J M-A-H-A-L at gmail.com or put it in the comments below. We are only going to do one free and we'll be more than happy to do the rest of them for you guys at $29.95. If you'll either bring your more or ship them to me, 
uh, the shipping back is going to kill you it's like a shipping synonym but at the same time we'd be more than happy to help you out with those things so we're going to try to get this done real quickly and we'll be right back Let's turn these things. Okay, well, I just decided maybe I'll better go ahead and show you all how I'm doing this. And I'm doing it by hand, as I said. I don't want anybody else to accuse me of, of doing this <laughs> with a machine or some sort. This is just plain old by hand, and you can see just how dirty this is. And it's not really as dirty as I'm making it out to be. It's just that, um, you know, if you stop and consider that dirt, grass, all this stuff builds up under here and as it stays wet it's going to cause it to rust out and you can already see here where the pulley covers they bounce up and down and I don't know if you can hear that over that electric heater right there it happens to be uh, 36 degrees outside right now so um, it's not the most perfect time for this but you won't sweat as badly except when you get on uh, several shirts and an old hoodie, insulated hoodie. But that just gives you an idea of how you want to keep these things clean. Now, how do you rinse that? And remember, this is just a pre-wash. Right here is how we're going to go ahead and rinse it. We're going to take just a damp, clear water, damp towel, and go ahead and get the majority of this off. And you can see I'm still getting some clippings that I washed up under there. Washed up under there. Okay, I know. I keep using my redneck sling. I need to quit that. Um, but all you want to do is get this stuff rinsed off. It would be better if I had it outside where I could rinse it off with a hose and make sure it's all gone. But I also did the top of the pulleys. And we want to get all that off because pulleys cost money. And as you know, the longer they last, the less often you have to spend money. So there you go. I'm also going to wash inside these right here. And I'm going to take those to the utility sink to do those. Well. So that, uh, that's a good start. So basically, that's where you're at. I'm going to go ahead and get another good rinsing on this thing with a, another towel. I'm going to go wash this towel up because I'm tight one. And... Um, I'm going to reuse it again. Get that all cleaned off. Then I'm going to come back with the Turtle Wax Hard Shell Soapy Water. And I'm going to wash this again. And at that point in time, I will rinse it lightly. But I'm going to make sure that the wax is on there. And it's doing going to do its job just fine. So I will be back shortly, guys. All right. Had to wait for the compressor to kick back off. For the next installment of this little dilly bob here, if you can see in there, I don't know if you can or not. I don't have one of those forward facing screens or monitors on my little A6000 Sony. If anybody wants to send me one, that'd be fine. Might make better videos. <laughs> anyway, here we go. Now, what we're going to do, we're going to put this nice, clean, waxy rinse on here. And uh, get underneath the pulleys real well. Make sure you cover everything. Get it good and clean. Get way back in there where all that stuff's at. Back over in here. Coat that real good. Coat these pulleys in here real good. Even on these idlers, you can do that real good on the inside. Won't hurt a thing because that hits the back side of your belts. So there you go. Now I'm going to let that set for just a little bit, even though this has already been washed with a brush, washed with a brush. I'm going to go ahead and put this on here. It's time to buff this machine anyway. I've had neighbors step up on this deck and, and uh, scuffed a little bit and had the lawnmower shop really scuffed it up, did a lot of damage to the paint and uh, the decal and scratched up the front and the back and really 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 did a lot of damage to my uh, my deck over here so the foot deck and I'll just show you that real quick so make sure when you take your more 
to one of these dealers that you get one that find you a dealer that just won't abuse your machine. Look at all these scratches right here. I'm going to try to pan over there real quick. And again, let me go over here where I can see what's going on behind the monitor here. Because I really can't tell since I can't see what you are seeing. Pull that back. This is not the fault of the more manufacturer. This is the fault of the dealer having people that don't really care about your more. And if you're a part of the new big dog and uh, hustler enthusiast group on Facebook, by all means, we know that you don't want to see scratches like that on your on your more anywhere. And that's just an egregious way to treat someone's equipment, especially that's paid their hard-earned cash for it. And uh, you can see the decal there where they really messed that up real badly. Really hate that. And I found when I went down there once to look at the more to get it, and they weren't hadn't even really touched it. They've been using it to uh, haul tools around and lay tools on and use it as a workbench and guys that's just no way to treat someone's equipment at all so all right I'm gonna get this finished up put back together and we'll finish up this video here a minute we're probably gonna have time to go ahead and try to do that to show you how to do these covers so before I put the cover on I'm gonna go wash it and I'll be back shortly Alrighty guys, here we are back, Max's Garage Mahal, and we've got the left side Hustler Raptor Super Duty 60 inch belt cover off. And by the way, I haven't said in this video, it is also the same as a Big Dog Alpha, and maybe some others in the Big Dog series, I'm not really sure. Um, I'm going to show you a few ways to do this, to measure and get your center line and all that. So I've left one side open for you here, and I'm sure you can't see it from all angles, but I've closed off this side so you can get an idea. So what I'd like to do is get a center line down the belt or the pulley. Now the center line is not like that, okay? The center line, because that puts the center over here, we want this grass to start and the clippings to start coming out right over in here as the spinning pulleys create an air circulation in there as well as the belt and we want that grass when it gets to this curve we want it to start coming on out immediately and by the time it gets here we want it to be completed we want this exit of clippings to be done around here usually around a circle unless it has some sort of laminar airflow then it won't stay adhered to that circle it will at some point in time exit so we want it to completely exit by here this hole is actually a freebie this is just to make sure that it's completely exiting before it goes back in these work really really well so how do we get there in an earlier video when we were doing tail lights we talked about radius. We have a radius here at the bottom. I'm probably in your way where you can't see. We have a radius here at the bottom. And we have a radius at the top. So we want to take the distance between this radius when it's through and this radius as it comes up this inside radius when it's through. We want to find out this distance from here to here. So how do you do that? Okay, there's several different ways. You can do it with this little rascal here. Okay. Let me see if y'all can see it on this, on this camera here. So what you're going to do is measure from the end of this radius to the beginning of this radius. And I made this hole a little extra large because when it gets to here, I want to make sure that it's really got an opportunity to exit. Then the rest of these are all standard size. I'm going to measure that hole. And I've got, wow, I got three. One, two, three. What's three, guys? I don't know. That's some sort of foreign language I'm not sure about. So over here we've got an inch and a quarter. Okay, so that's the total distance here. 
but the size of these holes we're going to make is an inch and an eighth. I make mine a little larger. For most people, I make them one inch. Um, I made mine a little larger because I wanted to make sure that people could see them real well in the videos. One inch is plenty. I do like to have the larger holes, but some people get a little bit bummed if you <laughs> remove very much from them. But still, very solid, so you don't have to worry about that. I've stood on them. Believe me, I've had a lot of people stand on them. That's the reason why I painted this yellow do not step on. It's not a step thing here. And uh, I want to make sure that people understand that this is not a step. That's a belt cover, and it keeps your fingers and toes and other objects out between the pulley and the belt. That would cut a finger off just like that, ladies and gentlemen. You don't want that to happen. Now, how did I mark that? Okay, so you can mark it a couple of different ways. So with this tape here, what I always use is this simple little old compass, pencil compass. This thing is older than most of you watching this video. This is probably, I think I probably got that in the second grade in Mrs. Miller's class in Searcy, Arkansas in 1957. I don't know if anybody's old enough to know when 1957 was, but the uh, Second World War had already come, gone. Korean War had been fought, ended. Um, we had people starting to uh, go to Vietnam to uh, look at situations over there to help the French so, and the Vietnamese people, of course. So this is quite old. It still works perfectly. Now the pencil... It's sort of dull, but it's okay. All right, so what I've done is I've taken this radius to the end, this radius to the end, I've determined that's uh, one inch. So I've measured up from here to here to the bottom, and I've added a half inch to that. So we're going to take this compass, and we're going to draw a line all the way around here, holding this compass at a steady distance, and you'll see the line I've already got on there matches here. So let's see if you can see it on this side. Yep, it looks pretty good. So now you want to know how do you determine the spacing? All right, so I've let you know that you want to have the center line of your pulley. Now if you notice, this thing looks like it's sitting at an angle, and it really is. You want to look at your deck really closely, and then find the center line from here to a 90 degree angle of your frame. That's what you're looking for. All right, so we're going to determine that this right here is center, right there. So we're going to measure over one eighth inch, and we're going to add half to that. Why is that? Well, we're going to measure from center over, and we know that we're going to drill a one inch hole. So you don't want to drill it starting where the inch comes to center. You need some space here, and that's that webbing you're going to leave will give you the reinforcement to keep this thing from collapsing. So that's what we're after. So what we're going to do, we know we want these one quarter inch, but on the very first drill, we're going to take half of that quarter, which is 250 thousandths. We're going to take, uh, or the quarter inch is 250 thousandths. Half of that is 125 thousandths, or one eighth inch. So we're going to take one eighth inch, add half inch to it, because that then would put it center of this hole right here. So what are we going to do now? We're going to pretend that I measured over half inch. So there is, and this is just, I'm going to show you different ways you can do this. In this particular video, you can use different drill bits. Here's a standard, see if you can see it. There's a standard metal drill bit. And you can drill it with that. But that don't start very well, and it's really easy to have the thing move around on you and, and mess up your hole. Something that works really well, that most of you have, and they're really cheap, is a plain old wood bit. See that little wood bit? That's called a paddle bit. That is just a plain old paddle bit. And this one happens to be a quarter inch. Really doesn't matter what you use, as long as it's smaller than the hole you're going to drill. And you can actually drill this with a one inch paddle bit. So we're going to put this right here and pretend that's in the center. And I can see this hole, so I know it's pretty much in the center and we're going to drill that. Now, I can do that in a drill real quickly if that would make you all, all feel better. And I know you all like to see step by step, and that's not step by step if I don't do it with a drill bit and a drill. Alright, I'm going to have to hold that because that thing's that light. 
Okay, there's your first hole. Now, you see these step bits right here? This does not quite go to a full one inch. So you can pre-drill it with this if you like. And as you can see, it does not get it all the way out. You can't see it from this camera, but you can see it from that camera. Alright, so now we're going to put Big Mama in here. Now, when you do this, make sure you got it good and tight. Now we're going to drill that. Big Mama. Alright, as you can see, I just got through taking off some more material off of mine. That's really not necessary. But if once you get this drilled out, it leaves a nice little chamfer there. You want to go to the inside of your belt cover and chamfer the inside to make sure that has nothing. You want a good radius in there, a chamfer or, or a radius, either one. And that allows the grass to come on out. Now, we're going to take this tape on off. On off. How y'all like that kind of language? That's really sharp, isn't it? On off. Now, okay. So I purposely drilled something, the paddle drill earlier, and let's see if y'all can see it from there. Let me zero into this camera first and see if you can see it. Do you see the square portion right here? Right there and right there. All right. You're going to have a little diamond shape in there once you start putting your chamfers in because it's going to come up the diamond. But as grass hits that, it's going to come right on over and go the other way, which is still great. All right, we're on standby over here, so let's see what's going on here. All right. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and we'll put this big mama in here. All right, see how close this is? You do not want that. This is for video purposes only. But what you do want to do here, see if I can get it where it still has some light on it. You want to come to the inside, and you want to hit this again. And you just barely want to hit it. Just enough to chamfer that. And you do want to hold this drill bit, this step drill, where it is. 90 degrees to hold. Now let me see if I can get this where you can see it. All right, let's see what we got here. I don't know if that camera will ever really pick that up. But that's how you do that, ladies and gentlemen. And for all of you watching that's uh, got children, children, y'all can do this. You can do it for your parents. Get permission first. Don't do it on your own. <laughs> don't do as I say. Do as or as I do. And don't even do as I say. Ask your parents first. Um, I grew up taking things apart and putting them back together. And um, there were a few occasions where I met with some leather and switches. My dear mother departed. Used to uh, make me go cut three switches at a time. And that's not a wives tale. This is the real deal, guys. It did me more good than not, believe me. And there was many occasions when my dear mother would send me out to her hundred foot long hedgerow beside the house and you'd cut three switches and that was just fine but you'd come back you know you're about this tall so you come back little tiny switches like this and she'd wear those things out on those little legs just giving you that right there on the way out to cut real switches which she then would pick out but you know this was an every time situation so children you don't want those switches and you certainly don't want my mother uh, on you of course that's not going to happen but still uh, <laughs> I learned a lot of my things the hard way. Y'all don't want to do that. So I'm going to try to show you how to do these things as we go along. Hopefully you enjoyed this and you'll hit the uh, thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, hit that notification bell so you can get further you know, videos coming down the pike. Share with as many people as you can. And by the way, let's not forget, we happen to have a giveaway at 250 subscribers. And someone will win a Max's Garage Mahal tape measure. Uh, let's see. We also... Let me grab one off the shelf over here, guys. I had to go get one. We got the clock contest. And you probably heard me in the front of the video, on the front end, say, well, 
Hello again, hello. Well, you could win. If you enter, you have to enter to win. So, if you'd like a chance to win one of Max's Garage Mahal clocks, and those things keep perfect time. Now, that one is ready to deliver to a customer so it doesn't have the battery in it. However, I'm going to give you the rules real quickly again. And here they are. Number one, subscribe to Max's Garage Mahal YouTube. Very, very important. For this, all you have to do is subscribe, and there will be a drawing for that. So let me move, tilt this up, pan back, just to, or whatever you call it, zoom back a little bit. And there's a chance to win one of Max's Garage Mahal. That's us. Max is going to be able to give away one of these clocks to the lucky winner. Subscribe to Max's Garage Mahal YouTube channel. Like Max's Garage Mahal YouTube channel. Click the notification tab on Max's Garage Mahal YouTube channel and be sure and share. That's the first four rules. Number five, you must be 18 to enter or have a guardian give written permission to Max's Garage Mahal at gmail.com. That's my email. And that's spelled without an apostrophe. That's just M A X S G A R A J M A H A L at gmail.com. You must include your real name and YouTube name in the email entry so that we know who to send this clock to if you win. Seven, an audio or video recording of yourself, put it in the comments below in the contest, the clock contest video, and you can find it in my channel. Uh, singing the lyrics at the end of these rules, and I'll sing them to you or at least read them to you in a moment. Uh, to your favorite tune, any tune, with the exceptions to jazz, hip hop, or rap. And I know somebody's going to say something about that, but that's okay. Email your sub submission to Max's Garage Mahal at gmail.com. That way I've got a backup of it in case it doesn't stick over there, too. We do have to have it there on the YouTube channel in the comments. Let's see. If someone other than yourself sing the lyrics, you must have written permission included with email submitting your entry for the use of the recording now and in the future. By submitting materials, illustrations, photos, recordings, and or text on or to Max's Garage Mahal's YouTube channel, Cocoscope channel, Facebook, Google+, Imgur, Instagram, Reddit, Tumblr, Twitter, WordPress, or Max's Garage Mahal.com, or any other venues that we use or we own, you grant Max's Garage Mahal, its parent company, subsidiaries, affiliates, partners, and licensees unlimited use of the material and the right to include your name in connection with any such use. We may modify, reproduce, and distribute your material in any medium in any manner or appropriate place, including but not limited to magazines, promotional merchandise, marketing, and other related materials. You can enter as many times as you like. Each entry must be a separate submission in the comments below and send it to the Max's Garage Mahal at gmail.com email. The lyrics are, let me see if I can get it where you can read these lyrics. Probably not on this camera, but let's see. There you go. Lyrics are, welcome to Max's Garage Mahal. Come on in, one and all. Or you can use an alternative line, welcome to one and all. Take a seat and stay a while. We'll try to make you smile. Alternate line, we hope you'll enjoy a smile. Winner will be chosen March 31st. Let's see if I can get that in here. Winner will be chosen March 31st, 2019. This should give everyone time to get their tunes chosen, their compilations created, submitted for the judges to listen to view, as well as their equipment for recording. Y'all have fun, and uh, make sure to enter this clock contest. We'd like for somebody to win that, have a really nice little wall clock. It should last you for years and years. So once again, guys, we thank you for coming by Max's Garage Hall. Y'all come back and see us now. Yeah, have a great day.